This video is going to be a bit of a doozy, so make sure you guys stick around for the full video. The Soviet Union? I thought you guys broke up. Yes, that's what we wanted you to think. <laughs> Guys, Commander 33 here slash John Claymore. I know I promised you guys a part five, and here it is. And this right here is what I got to say. NATO is an absolute joke, and I'm going to break down why NATO is such a joke. Now, guys, I have decided to make parts five, six, seven, eight, and possibly a ninth, because there's really and truly a lot to go into here as far as the U.S.'s relationship with Russia and, of course, U.S. relationship with China and how China relates to Russia and how that stuff is going to actually affect one another. So this right here is going to be a long continuing series, and I've decided to do this right here on uh, Commander 33 alone. Now, by the way, guys, I'm still thinking about renaming this channel. I'm thinking about either Short Timer Knowledge, or I'm thinking about The Short Timer, or another one is Gear Issue 33. Gear Issue 33 was actually my, uh, my number of gear issue when I was in boot camp for my platoon. And it was also coincidentally the same uh, gear number that I got for uh, when I volunteered at a fire department. So I'm thinking about that right there. By the way, that volunteering at the fire department didn't last very long. It's a long story. But I want to talk about this issue. But first, I got to provide a little bit of updates on things. First of all, Russia is apparently burning down a plant and uh, taking down a city. Yeah, Kurzhen is apparently a port city. It was one of the key areas that Russia originally wanted. And I guess now they're starting to move in. I think the Ukrainian army is still holding up very, very well. The Ukrainian civilian populace is holding up very, very well, uh, considering everything that's going on. But once again, guys, during the fog of war, things change, things shift. Sh I mean, things just go shift to shift. So the information kind of just flows at a much, much rapid pace. So you're getting different types of uh, info. But guys, before we talk about uh, all this right here, I got to break something down. It looks like the strategy in Russia has changed. It looks like what they want to do is they want to split the uh, they want to split Ukraine at the Dnieper River. I think that is the whole point of this entire ordeal, which, by the way, is kind of strange because it makes me think that maybe Vladimir Putin is not after the entire country of Ukraine. Like, he does not want to actually engulf himself or he's not want to completely engulf that actual region. And I think the main reason why may be because it's going to be very, very difficult to maintain. As I've said before, I think this entire ordeal is going to be a giant proxy war, and as I'll detail in part six, seven, eight, and nine, why is I think this is going to be the final part is going to be how does it all end? And to tell you the truth, I think I will be throwing in some Bible prophecy on this channel probably towards the end of the series. So for all you know, this thing here could turn into twelve takes, but uh, it's something that I think needs to be discussed. I think it's very, very important that we do discuss, and I think it's very important that we do talk about this word because you need to get prepped for these type of things, especially going forward. I'm going to move the camera just a little bit, guys. I know it's kind of a bit of an editing error, but, you know, whatever. Uh, but there's something I want to address really, really quick, something I thought was kind of funny. Uh, Joe Biden's State of the Union. Yeah, it's been a very, very rough week for Kamala Harris. First, there was that bit where uh, she apparently got up and said, you know, you get what you vote for. And then, of course, there is this right here. Hey, break it down in layman's terms for people who don't understand what's going on and how can this directly affect the people of the United States? So Ukraine is a country in Europe. It exists next to another country called Russia. Russia is a bigger country. Russia is a powerful country. Russia decided to invade a smaller country called Ukraine. So basically that's wrong. Yeah, that sounded like a child. It just sounded like a child explaining something to another child and wasn't very, very nuanced. It's almost as if to say that they think their voter base is absolutely stupid. Well, a lot of us here on my side of the aisle believe that that voter base was very, very stupid for a while, but uh, they're not even really hiding how they really and truly feel about their voters. I, and that right there, of course, was aimed at younger younger viewers that uh, that show was. But something else, too, the State of the Union, okay, as you guys are seeing Kamala Harris's facial expression, oh, wait, that right there is a meme. But, but yeah, you know, I, I noticed some very, very weird things about Kamala Harris at the State of the Union, like, for example, the way the haircut was done. Uh, yeah, she kind of looks a little bit like Megatron from Transformers, the, uh, the cartoon, the original cartoon. Us, uh, uh us, uh, 80s kids, uh, if we used to watch that show, kind of, oh, here's another, oh, wait, 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 here, here, here's my personal favorite one. Yeah, yeah, my sister sent this one right here to me, uh, 
earlier if you guys know what I'm saying. I mean, this is absolutely hilarious. I mean, it's, it's ridiculous <laughs> that uh, these memes are coming out the way they are. But guys, before we dive into this, we're going to go ahead and get on this right now. Make sure you guys hit that like button. Make sure you guys subscribe. Make sure you guys share this video south in the comment section. I want to get you guys' thoughts. Definitely hit that like button so this video will travel in the algorithm. And let's go ahead and dive into this. So, yes, uh, NATO is, in fact, a joke. And it's even a bigger joke when you consider the fact that it's not just the whole wokeness and, you know, NATO's doing the same crap and going green, especially Germany. It's the fact that they've been buying their oil from Russia for a very long time. Now, they've been relying on Russia for all this oil. And it looks a little bit hypocritical that this entire ordeal is occurring, but it's not so much the fact that NATO itself is buying the oil. We've been buying a lot of oil from Russia as well. And, of course... Well, they keep on saying it's only about 3%, but the problem is this right here. When you add up all those bar all, all those barrels per day, it, it goes to, it gets above the million mark. It actually gets way above the million mark. It's roughly, I'd say it's probably right around 17.8 million barrels of oil that you guys saw in that land. Well, I think it was the second video that I did. And it's very, very strange because the United States could completely, uh, could completely avoid all of this if we would just reinstall the Keystone Pipeline and go back to drilling. But of course... That six to seven percent of the nation that doesn't like drilling, you know, the uh, radical left, yeah, that really is who Joe Biden is governing for. He's only governing about maybe twenty percent of the country. Meanwhile, the other eighty percent actually lives out there, and they don't really know what the hell to do. They have to actually live off these extremely high gas prices, and they're the ones that have to suffer. Also, by the way, and I'm going to bring this up much, much more thoroughly in the video about U.S. Russia relations, is that the United States we get a lot of our wheat from Russia, and we also get a lot of our fertilizer from Russia. That's going to become a problem later on here in the future, especially when it comes to food. And if you want to see things get out of control, start screwing with people's food. It's already going up in price, and it's probably only going to go up further if you guys know. Once again, and I'll say this one more time, this entire ordeal, in my opinion, Ukraine, is not important to the interest of the United States. Now, guys, really, really quick, I'll talk about NATO spending after this next series because I put together this nice little package of clips here one's going to be about a minute and 12 seconds the other is a pete booty gig i sometimes i call him butt plug it's about 25 seconds and of course jen saki her response earlier today of course we're talking about what about the united states buying russian oil we're talking about the fact that for whatever reason biden is looking at iran for oil and to go on top of that the fact that well i'll just go ahead and let you guys see it for yourself as long as we're buying russian oil though aren't we financing the war well, Jackie, again, uh, it's only about 10 percent of what we're importing. Uh, I've not made any announcement about any decision on that front. But our objective here and our focus is making sure that any step we take maximizes the impact on President Putin and minimizes it on the American people. And anyone who's calling for uh, an end to the carve out uh, should President be possibly consider authorizing the Keystone Pipeline, uh, working something out with Iran. I mean, uh, look, the, the president has said that all options are on the table, but we also need to make sure that uh, uh, we're not galloping after permanent solutions to immediate short-term problems where uh, more strategic and tactical actions in the short term November's can make congressional a difference. elections, high oil prices are a risk to the Biden administration. Last year, the administration the tied, been, uh, tried to push down oil prices by organizing a drawdown of emergency oil reserves. Other developments in the Middle East were also part of the conversation, including Iran and Yemen. The White House said that the two leaders discussed Iranian-enabled attacks by the Houthis against Saudi Arabia. On the call, Sanman told Biden that Saudi Arabia wants a political resolution in Yemen. Biden also repeated the United States' commitment to support Saudi Arabia in defending itself against attacks by Yemen's Iran-aligned Houthi group. The conflict in Yemen is largely seen as a proxy war between Saudi Arabia and Iran. Now, Wednesday's call came as the Houthis have intensified drone and missile attacks against Saudi Arabia. They have begun directly targeting the United Arab Emirates, which is Riyadh's key ally in the region. On the 17th of January, the Houthis launched a drone and missile attack that killed three people in Abu Dhabi. Several similar attacks subsequently targeted the Gulf country. Last week, the United States military announced it would deploy a destroyer and fighter jets to the UAE to show support for Abu Dhabi. Number one, this entire ordeal could have been completely avoided had we left those sanctions on Nord 2 and kept the permits on the Keystone Pipeline. Okay, that would, that would also keep our gas prices down. We would not be in this situation or it would have delayed the situation a year or two for us to actually create contingencies. 
The next thing is this right here. The only reason why we are looking at Iran is because Biden called the Saudi Arabians the pariah of the Middle East, the pariah of the world. It actually angered them, and he demanded that OPEC pump out more oil. You guys remember that right there. And, of course, when that right there happened, Saudi Arabia got upset. So you're buying oil from Russia. And, by the way, this, this is crude, and oil goes in more things than just gas. I mean, it just goes, more into, it goes into more places than your gas tank. Also, with the natural gas in Ukraine, the situation getting out of hand, I'm a little bit baffled of why the world Biden even allowed this to occur. But then again, that I remember that he's a moron, he's weak, and he's never been right about any sort of a foreign policy decision ever in his life. Biden was a man of integrity. Still, I think he's been wrong on nearly every major foreign policy and national security issue over the past four decades. I think he's gotten a lot wrong. You're talking all through the years yeah. as vice I, president. I, I, he opposed every one of Ronald Reagan's military programs to uh, contest the Soviet Union. Once again, we're reminded by former Secretary of Defense Bob Gates exactly how bad this man is when it comes to foreign policy. Now, guys, like I said, open up our own oil, okay? Biden opened up the strategic oil reserve and it only bought us three days and it only dropped the price by like a few cents. It was barely even noticeable. Number two, why in the world are we continuing to go back to OPEC for oil when we have our own and we can actually export? As a matter of fact, if we want to, we could export to NATO, which, by the way, I'm going to get all that there in a second because that is where I'm going to end this video at. But here's the thing. We're still buying oil from Russia, which, by the way, we shouldn't be doing at this point in time. It's almost like we're funding the actual war. Even that lefty, even, even that very, very liberal media member pointed out the fact that we are actually funding this war whether we know it or not. So we're not even helping Ukraine out, if you guys know what I'm saying. We're actually helping Russia out. We're actually fueling their economy while at the same time being somewhat subservient to him, of course, when it comes to grain, wheat, fertilizer, and now oil, and possibly natural gas. To go on top of that, you know good and well that if we're subservient to Putin, he's going to rip us off. We should know by now that if we piss off the Saudi Arabians, they're going to rip us off. The Iranians hate us. They're going to rip us off. And to go on top of that, it looks like they want us to intervene in Yemen, if you guys caught that. If you guys caught that little piece of information you guys saw. Now, the biggest reason why NATO is such a joke. Could you guys take a look at this budget? Take a look at how much we're paying. We're paying over $6 trillion of NATO's budget. Over $6 trillion of NATO's budget. You got you guys see that right there? I mean, England's paying substantially much, much lower than we are. Everybody's paying like in the low billions. Are you guys seeing this right? Are you seeing exactly how much we pay? I mean, I knew we paid a lot. And by the way, so, okay, so let me back up for a second. So you mean to tell me that we are funding Russia's war. We're not helping Ukraine in any way, shape, or form while we're doing it, or we're supposed to be helping them out, but at the same time, we're funding Russia. We're also, uh, at the same time while all this is going on, we are trying to buy oil from Iran and Saudi Arabia, who, by the way, are going to rip us off. And then to go on top of that, now we've got to intervene in Yemen, this has got to be the most incompetent foreign policy disaster I think I have ever seen in my entire life. I mean, I know I've only been alive, I'm only in my mid-30s, and I know there's a lot of people out there who've been alive a, long, a lot longer than me who've probably seen just as bad, but I can't think of anything on record that speaks of stupidity and absolute insanity other than this here. And guys, I got to make one last point. Okay, before I end this video, okay, I talked about how much money that we're spending on NATO. Don't you guys find it very, very convenient that uh, when socialists go out there and say stuff like, well, we got free health care in, uh, in Spain. We've got, uh, we, we, we've got this right here in Germany. We've got this right here in, uh, in, uh, in Denmark. We've got this right here in Italy. Okay, let me ask you a question. Do you think that that crap is possible by some little bit? Do you think it's possible because the United States is flipping the vast majority of your freaking defense bill? We're the one that's kicking in all the money. Do you think that, well, I don't have to pay an additional 200 or so billion dollars on defense? Well, I could put that $200 billion into a, uh, I don't know, another line, you know, like a, like, like healthcare or something of that nature there. The only reason why you dumbasses in Europe are getting by is because you live off the United States. It's the only reason why any one of you sons of bitches are even standing right now is because of the United States and the American taxpayer is beginning to get fed up with this, if you guys know what I'm saying. Look at that budget one more time. So we're giving NATO basically all of our money. We're basically, for them to basically do practically nothing. I mean, only Sweden has stepped up and decided to actually, uh, you know, uh, I don't know, uh, send uh, send weapons over to Ukraine. They're the only ones who've actually done this. And to go on top of that, um, we're funding the war. 
and at the same time subservient again to a Saudi prince, who by the way, who by the way is going to rip us off, and we're subservient to an enemy in Iran, who by the way is going to rip us off, and by the way they want us to commit more personnel to another shithole country in the Middle East. Guys, I, I, I mean, I don't know what else to say. I knew that this right here was going to be the longest take out of all the takes, and I knew it was going to be the most exhausting. But somehow or another, it ceases. It never ceases to amaze me how stupid, how dumb the establishment swamp is and how dumb the establishment voter is. Guys, Commander 33, if you like the content, hit the like button, subscribe, share, sound off in the comment section. Please do. And I'll see you guys later. I suddenly remembered my Charlemagne. Let my armies be the rocks and the trees and the birds in the sky.